from behind the giant planet. We are outward bound on our mission to explore the outer solar system. 10,000 years from now, Voyager will plunge onward to the stars. We have made the ships that sail the sea of space. We travel past Jupiter three quarters of a billion kilometers from the sun. Saturn, one and a half billion, Uranus, three billion, and Neptune, four and a half billion kilometers away. In our ship of the mind, we retrace the itinerary of the two Voyager spacecraft on their journeys to Saturn and beyond. Saturn was first glimpsed through the telescope by Galileo, its rings first understood by Huygens. But only now do we begin to penetrate its deeper mysteries. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system. Like Jupiter, it is cloud covered and rotates once every 10 hours. It has a weaker magnetic field, a weaker radiation belt, and a grand, magnificent, exquisite system of rings. The rings are composed of billions of tiny moons, each circling Saturn in its own orbit. The biggest gap in the rings is called the Cassini division, after the colleague of Huygens who first discovered it. There are many other gaps, each produced by the periodic gravitational tugs of one of the larger outer moons. From just beneath the ring plane, we see a sky full of moons. Within the rings, the individual moons become visible. They are orbiting chunks of snow and ice, each perhaps a meter across. In young parts of the ring system, there has not been enough time for collisions to round the edges of these fragments, the snowballs of Saturn. Far from the rings, bathed in its red light, we encounter Saturn's immense cloud-covered moon, Titan. It has an atmosphere denser than that of Mars and a thick layer of red clouds which are probably composed of complex organic molecules produced by solar ultraviolet light and other energy sources from the methane-rich air. No ship from Earth has ever penetrated those clouds and viewed close up the surface of this tantalizing world.
It seems likely the ground is covered, encrusted with organic molecules raining from the sky. There may be volcanoes and valleys of ice, and just perhaps, hiding in the warm places, some very different kind of life. Near an ice cliff of Titan, through a rare break in the clouds of organic molecules, we can see, looming and lovely, the ring planet Saturn. It is a view that will still be appreciated centuries from now by our descendants, who will know it well, as well as we have come to know Hudson's Bay and the Barents Sea, Indonesia and Australia and New York. They will look back to the time when Titan was first glimpsed by the Voyager spaceships on their epic journeys past the giant planets, out of the solar system, to the great dark between the stars. Since Cosmos was first shown, Voyager spacecraft have explored the systems of the planets Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and have now passed the outermost planets on their way to the stars. We inserted the flavor of those encounters in our captain's log, but with image processing, we've been able to reconstruct astonishing movies of some of these worlds. Here, for example, is Jupiter, with its great red spot. And volcanic Io spinning before us. Icy Enceladus, a tiny moon of Saturn on much of which, somehow, the craters have melted. And Miranda of Uranus. Austere blue Neptune. Or consider Titan, the giant moon of Saturn, We've taken the nitrogen and methane in its atmosphere, irradiated it in the lab with electrons of the sort that are beamed at Titan from Saturn's magnetic field, and we make this stuff, which matches almost perfectly the observed properties of the Titan haze. What is it? It's a mixture of complex organic molecules. You drop some of the stuff into water, and among other things, you make amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. So. The starting materials of life are raining from the skies of Titan, like manna from heaven. I can't wait until the Cassini mission sends an entry probe through the organic haze of Titan to its enigmatic surface. The Voyager spacecraft rush on past the planets and to the stars, still returning data. As it left the planetary part of the solar system, Voyager 1 turned back to take one last portrait of the planets of the solar system. And one of those pictures was of the Earth, a tiny blue dot set in a sunbeam. Here it is. That's where we live. That's home. We humans are one species, and this is our world. It is our responsibility to cherish it. Of all the worlds in our solar system, the only one, so far as we know, graced by life.